Good morning and welcome to this edition of Hyclopedia. Now, you've probably never heard of Malabang or Manabang Mountain, but if you're interested in Taiwan's history, then you probably should have, because it's been the scene of some really interesting events over the years. Located near Dahu in Miali County, or Strawberry Country as I like to call it, Manabang is one of the 100 Shao Bai Yue, or 100 top small mountains of Taiwan. The name Manabang is a Chinese transliteration of Manapan, which is the Atayal language word for magnificent mountain. And it is down to the fighting spirit and braveness of the local Atayal indigenous people that this mountain has secured a place in Taiwan's history books. The first major incident recorded to have occurred here was in 1895, just after Japan had taken control of Taiwan. Japanese forces arrived on the island soon afterwards to assert sovereignty over their new colonial possession. But this didn't prove easy, as various local armed groups resisted their new masters. And the battle at Manabang Mountain was one of them. It took place in 1896 between Japanese troops and local Atayal tribes, who had been reinforced by defeated local militias from the Tonglo, Tofen and Beipu areas. Japan was busy trying to pacify resistance to their leadership, first moving through Taiwan's plains before tackling the mountainous areas. The local forces put up a good fight here, but they were eventually wiped out by the Japanese troops and their superior weapons. They did, however, inflict heavy losses on the colonial forces, leading the Japanese to build a memorial in honour of their dead. The original monument disappeared, but in 1984 it was rebuilt at the site here to commemorate the battle. Just a few minutes from the battleground is this place, formerly known as Lawn Camp. It's the site of a former Japanese barracks. According to online sources, artillery was also deployed here, as the views that this spot gives over the nearby valley would have enabled the Japanese troops to track movements among the local people. There's also some evidence of earthworks from the former barracks. Another interesting incident that took place in this area occurred in the aftermath of the Nandrung incident in 1902. If you need a background on the Nandrung incident, then please go and check out my Jali Sham video over here. It needs some love, that's for sure. Start at around the seven minute mark for a brief history of what happened at Nandrung. A few months after events at Nandrang, the Japanese invited the chief protagonist of the incident, Re Aguai, and around 80 other indigenous people that they considered to be responsible to a surrender or peacemaking ceremony. There's a picture of it here. However, peacemaking was the last thing on the minds of the Japanese. And after the ceremony, Japanese troops ambushed and opened fire on the attendees killing 39 of the indigenous people and their leaders, although Re somehow managed to escape. Other battles between indigenous peoples and the Japanese also took place in this area around the end of 1902, although I'm not sure whether they were related to the Nandrung incident or not. Maybe a knowledgeable viewer can let me know in the comments. Anyway, in this third incident, anti-Japanese militia were once again the target, as Taiwan's Governor General Kadama Gentaro sent three infantry regiments into the area around Malabang Mountain on October the 10th to root out fighters, who they believed were trying to link up with local indigenous forces. The local militia and the Atayal tribes once again fought bravely. But the arrival of reinforcements, plus the military training and superior firepower of the Japanese forces, which included artillery, proved decisive. Exactly. 
By December 12th, the Japanese were able to claim victory in their latest campaign against resistance forces. The battles here at Malapan were just some of dozens that took place during the early years of Japanese administration of Taiwan. And it was around 20 years or so before the Japanese were able to assert what they considered full control over the island. So that is a potted history of events in the Malabang region over the years. Rather bloody, I think you'll agree. But even if you're not into history, Malabang Mountain is still a nice place to visit, as you can see. The walk to the summit and back is around 4.5 kilometers and will take you roughly three hours at a leisurely pace. And even if you don't like hiking, you can come here for a bit of fresh air and the chance to pick some strawberries because believe me, there are a lot of places to choose from around here. All right guys, that is about it for today. I hope you enjoyed the uh, abridged history lesson. Um, there's links to some of my sources in the description. Um, so if you enjoyed it, then you know what to do. Give me a like and you can always subscribe if you want to. And if you want to get a reminder every Saturday morning for my new video, you can click the bell for notifications. Once again, thanks to all my coffee mates. I really don't know how to thank you apart from sending you a patch if you buy me three or more coffees. Um, yeah, so that's it for today. Take it easy and I'll see you next week. Oh, and one more thing. Merry Christmas to everybody who's celebrating Christmas. Over and out. Damn, it's hot.